So you get three sevenths? Yes, absolutely. It's as simple as that. You take the square root of 9 and the square root of 49, and your answer is 3 sevenths. Thank you, Olivia. Extend that down a little bit. All right, so on these questions, it's not so important now, but it will become important for you to realize that this is the same as, this is equal to negative, okay? So go put negative root 25, root 25 over root 49. So you see how you separate them. Uh, because in that, right now it's not such a big deal for you to do that. But it will become that way. You need to understand the concept that you can separate this radical from that radical and then divide them. So in this case, again, we recognize our perfect squares. What's our answer, Olivia? We've got um, negative. We'll have negative 5 over 7. Yes, and that's it. Put it in a box. We're all set. Good job. So you see, division is not too hard yet it gets a little harder but so far so good especially when we're in perfect square land we're on 11-5 dividing radicals on page 501 we've just done number one and number six so in this one number 14 we yeah it looks like there's some connection between the 20 and the 5 right the root 20 root 5 the thing is yes there is but you got to do it like this you have to break root 20 into what root 4 times root 5 do that. That's the way to do it. Root 4 times root 5. Don't just cancel 20 divided by 5 over root 5. And now, with, now that you've broken it in that manner, you can cancel root 5 with root 5. That's the way to do it. All right? And then you're left with root 4, which equals root 4. Just put root 4 equals 2. And try to stand out of the way when you're doing it because you stand sometime in front of it. Good job. There it is. Number 14. Not too hard as long as you know your principles. <laughs> Everybody try it. This is number 27. Root 15x to the fifth over root 3x. And sounds like a couple of people already know. How do you break that down? Yes. Okay, so you break it down by root 15 and the x to the fifth. So um, 3 times 5 is 15. Right, root 5, root 3. Good job. Root 5, root 3. Good job. Thanks for standing on the side. Now, yeah, good. And then on the bottom, you have root 3, root x, right? Root 3, root x. Now, what, what's going to happen to the root x, the x to the fifth? X fourth. Root x to the fourth <laughs> times root x. Root x to the fourth times root x. Good. X to the fourth. Why? Because we take the biggest even exponent, which is four. Right, Omave? Yeah. And as Lucia just said, the root three and the root three could cancel, right? GCF. Oh, and the x too. I didn't even see it. So yes. All right. So what's left over? Hey, how about root x to the fourth? What's root x to the fourth equal to? X squared. X squared, right, Jazzy? Root x to the fourth. So we got root five. X squared. And that's it. Except we want to write it with the x squared on the other side because that's convention. We always write the stuff that's not inside the radical on the other side, okay? So it's actually written x squared root 5. Yes. There it is. Put it in a box, package it, seal it, and send it away. There you go. No, he placed it. Send it to A guy to be placed it. Number 31, root 9 over root 8. It's equal to 3 over root 8. That's obvious because root 9 equals 3. And then do we break root 8 down into root 4 terms or root 2? It's pretty obvious. 3 over root 4 root 2 is equal to 3 over 2 root 2 because root 4 is equal to 2. Now the problem is we can't leave it this way. It's not simple until the radical is not in the denominator. We cannot have a radical in the denominator. So we have to do what is called rationalize the denominator. Now, to do this, we have to multiply, rationalize the denominator. Thank you rationalize the denominator. We have to multiply by root 2 over root 2. I'll just write that, excuse me, root 2 over root 2. Okay? We're multiplying by root 2 over root 2, denominator. That's right, good. Right? Because root 2 over 2 is actually equal to 1. We're allowed to do that. Mathematically, it makes sense. Root, root 2 over root 2 is equal to 1. Well, all we do is multiply by 1. Now, um, what, do we, what is it equal? It equals 3 root 2, okay good, 3 root 2 over, now what's root 2 times root 2? It's a double, isn't it? It's 2, so it's 2 times 2. See what happened? 
Oh, oh don't worry, it's okay. We have a problem. That's three root two over four. Three root two over four. <laughs> and there's your answer. See, what happened is this right here, the root two times root two is equal to two. And we have two times two and we're done. Three root two over four. And there it is, folks. That's called rationalizing the denominator.